Senator Jeff Merkley, it's the day after the 2020 election. Uh, thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time and congratulations to you. Thank you very much, Tim. Good to be with you. Uh, I, let, let's talk about your race against uh, Joe Ray Perkins. Um, well, the last I looked, uh, you, you beat her by 19 points. But my question is, uh, she's a QAnon supporter who garnered about 40% of the vote. And another QAnon supporter won her race in Georgia. So my question to you is, are you surprised at how many citizens would vote for people who support these kind of wild conspiracy theories? Well, I don't really believe that most folks who were voting in the race were familiar with, with her, her background. It's, it's, uh, uh, I think it was more a, a generic uh, Republican base, voted for the Republican uh, candidate. Uh, independents uh, swung my direction, and thank you very much to, uh, to all of them. Uh, but it wasn't a case where we were actually having a highly tested campaign uh, because there were no debates. I did no television. It's probably the first ca Senate campaign since, the, uh, since television became a significant thing that where the a candidate didn't buy any television ads. Oh, my apologies to the television stations for that. <laughs> well, we'll forgive you this time. Um, so, uh, but that was by design, right? You, 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 you made a conscious decision not to, not to buy any television. That is correct. Uh, let's move on to the presidential election. I'm sure you've been uh, on edge like, uh, like many people, like many Americans. Uh, and just a few minutes ago, uh, CNN and I think the Associated Press both called Michigan for Joe Biden now. So he is within, uh, uh, you know, Nevada of winning the presidency. So uh, what do you see happening here? Uh, how, how does this play itself out? Because President Trump has already said he's going to sue Michigan and he wants a recount in Wisconsin and he wants the voting stopped in other places. So what do you think is going to happen? Well, the president's team is going to file a lot of lawsuits. Uh, they just, they've lined up a lot of lawyers and they're, re they're ready to, to seek any potential little angle, uh, hoping that something will stick. I just don't think the American people are going to be that receptive to it. Uh, it, it, it looks like uh, that there's a very good chance that Pennsylvania race will come out for Biden in the end. Uh, there's uh, some chance that Georgia will come out in addition to the fact that, uh, as you point out with Nevada, uh, Biden already has the electoral college uh, votes. So uh, I, I do think um, that Americans want every vote to be counted. They want as much integrity as, as possible in this, but they're not gonna take too kindly to uh, the president's efforts to disrupt the counting in order to benefit himself and, and try to steal this election. And now I know you have been a proponent of abolishing the Electoral College. Uh, do you see that happening any time in, say, the next decade? <laughs> well, Tim, probably not. But here's why <laughs> we should all talk about it a lot, which is that in our divided America, it would be very, very useful to have every citizen's vote carry the same weight so that a Republican nominee would campaign in blue states, a, a Democratic uh, nominee would campaign in red states with their message because everywhere you went, picking up votes would matter. So right now it's basically, well, if those states are blue and those are red, we'll ignore those. And we have a small number of swing states and the messages are crafted in that fashion, messages that don't necessarily bring America together. So it would be very, very healthy for us to, to go to uh, every vote counts the same and it get, fits the vision of our constitution of equal representation uh, in, a, in America. So I'd like to see it. I have filed a constitutional amendment for that change and I don't expect that to happen. I'm very supportive of another strategy called national popular vote, which can get there by this enough states deciding, yes, we believe it should be a popular vote, so we'll assign our electoral votes to the winner of the popular vote rather than the winner of our state vote. And there are about, there are enough states that have entered this compact now to put that at over 200 dedicated votes, but you have to get to 270 plus or 271 uh, before that would actually kick in. But so there's a path to get there without a constitutional amendment. And, and I think it'd be a very, very healthy thing for America. Well, and finally, Senator, I just want to talk uh, with you about your Senate colleagues. Uh, Democrats had a chance to take over the chamber, but it appears that they've come up just a bit short uh, as strong challengers fell and incumbents were toppled. Uh, so what happened? Well, really what we saw is uh, the Democrats pick up Arizona and Colorado 
which were the two strongest states in terms of the, the polling margin, uh, losing in Alabama, which was also rather expected. And then you had these series of very close states, uh, states including uh, Georgia and North Carolina and Maine. And right now, uh, uh, Maine and, and North Carolina look like they're going to be resolved in support of the incumbent. That would leave the count it at 4850. But you have, still have the two Georgia seats outstanding. One of them will definitely go to a runoff and the other might as well. In which case, the control of the Senate would be decided on January 5th. And, uh, and so if that happens, uh, uh, let's say it ended up 50-50, then the vice president becomes the tie-breaking vote. Is that correct? That's right. So if we get to 50-50 uh, and if uh, Biden wins, then Democrats will control the Senate by the narrowest of conceivable margins. But it does mean what bills get to the floor, what amendments are allowed to be voted on, what committee hearings are held to explore uh, issues, what process is in place to facilitate uh, the confirmation of nominations. Those things matter a lot. So if, if, there, is, if there are two Georgia seats being uh, uh, considered in, in, on a special runoff January 5th, then that is going to have a huge impact on America's journey. Well, Senator Merkley, uh, I know uh, it's been a busy uh, couple of days for you. Uh, elections are always uh, fraught with uh, various uh, anxieties. Uh, I hope you're doing well and uh, continued success and good health to you, sir. Tim, thank you very much. Yes, stay healthy.